Hi, this is Gary with MacMOS Now. On today's episode, let's look at the new Safari Extensions feature. This episode of MacMost Now is brought to you by Gazelle. Gazelle is the easiest and fastest way for you to sell and recycle your gadgets. For instance, I just went to the site and looked up the value of my iPhone 3GS and it came up to more than $150. So you may want to check out the value of your gadgets. Every item gets an offer and you get paid to be environmentally responsible. And you use the promo code MacMos2 and you get a 5% bonus. So today Apple released Safari version 5.0.1. The major change is full support now for the new Safari extensions. Let's take a look. So if you haven't already, of course you need to go to software update and make sure you download the new version of Safari 5.0.1. Once you do, one of the changes you'll notice is a Safari extensions gallery menu choice under the Safari menu. Select that and it'll bring up this list of Safari extensions. There's a whole bunch of different ones, a few recommended at the top, and the list goes on and on of different ones that you can choose. So let's start by choosing, say, Twitter for Safari. And most of these have an Install Now button. And you see you click on it, and it actually installs just like that. Immediately installs, there's nothing else you need to do. So what does this Twitter toolbar do? Well, of course, you've got a search field here to directly search Twitter. You've also got a Related Tweets button. You've got a quick link to show what accounts are associated with this website. So for instance, the MacMost and my own ROSENZ account is associated there. And you have uh, overall trending topics on Twitter and a tweet button. And these work in an interesting way. For instance, if I click here, I can see a list of the accounts. I can also click on related tweets. And it's more interesting if you go to a piece of content. So let's say, for instance, let's go to this automator tutorial here and I'll click on related tweets and it gives me the sidebar here and it shows me several tweets about Automator including three that are about this article in particular. You can also click on the tweet button. It'll jump to Twitter and immediately put in the title of the page that you were looking at and a shortened URL for it. So it's very quick and easy to tweet about a page that you've seen. Here's another one I found useful. There's a Gmail counter toolbar. Install that and immediately puts this toolbar up here and it will tell you how many messages you have in your Gmail inbox and what the subject of those messages are as well. So now when I go to a YouTube page and I am viewing a video, I can click on that button there and you can see it dims out everything else on the page except the video content. It only seems to work at YouTube. It doesn't work, for instance, at MacMost, which has YouTube videos embedded, but it's a nice little extension to have. You can see here that it adds a button here at the top and it also affects how you see a web page. Here's another interesting one that adds a button. This is called Duplicate Tab Button. And of course, you've had the ability now to create new tabs very easily. But what this button does now is it duplicates the current tab. So it opens up the current window in a new tab. Now there's much more to extensions than just that. If you go to Safari and Preferences, there's a new tab here called Extensions. And you can see a list of all the extensions you've had installed. You can easily uninstall any one of these by clicking on the Uninstall button. You can also disable the extension as well. And these, check, these uh, changes take effect immediately. Now for some of these, there are a lot of different preferences. For instance, how exactly the Gmail counter works. So once you've updated to Safari 501, you want to check out the Safari extensions page and see if there's anything you can find useful. There's also a lot of information there about how to create your own extensions. Any programmer or developer can do it, so you may want to think about creating one for your website or for your area of expertise. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.